Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. We are delighted to welcome the mayor of Ely in White Pine County, Nathan Robinson, here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker, and you've got a lot of convention space and meeting breakout space for people. Tell us about what's available. Well, we can handle a group up to about 250, uh, and anywhere as small as 10 or 15. So it really depends on what you're looking for, what the customer's looking for. We're open to anything. It's a beautiful drive, and if you live in South Reno, it's probably about 30, 35 minutes, so it's real easy to get to. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're absolutely delighted to welcome to the program Nathan Robertson. He is the mayor of Ely there in White Pine County. It is an absolute pleasure to have you on the program, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, so the first question I have to ask you, and it's going to sound like a stupid question, but we have a lot of viewers and listeners in Southern Nevada and Las Vegas. Um, does Ely and White Pine County still feel a part of Nevada, or do you feel more of being part of Utah at this point because most of your television comes from Utah and it seems like Ely has, you know, an afterthought, uh, a little less than Elko. And, <laughs> and my friend Daniel Corona in West Wendover would probably empathize. Well, and I'll tell you, I don't think there's any place that's more Nevada, in fact, than Ely or White Pine County. Um, we've had governors come from Ely and White Pine County. Uh, we've been a very influential part of the state for a long, long time. Um, it's true that we are in the uh, DMA area for Utah, but uh, our local TV district, which I also sit on, uh, we work really hard to make sure we bring in local news from, from Reno and from Vegas. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, a, we're an integral part of the state. Ely's the sixth oldest city in the state of Nevada. And with a state that only has 19 cities total, I think that's a pretty incredible thing. And um, yeah. Well, for me, and, and I have a fondness as I shared with sure. you, uh, my wife and I fell in love in Ely at the Copper Queen uh, <laughs> back in the 1980s, and we've been together ever since, so romance in Ely does not stay in Ely. Um, it's still a magical place, the it, Copper Queen. So. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. But one of the things that I've always felt, because um, um, I worked for the Don Ray Media Group mm -hmm. uh, for many years, they own KOLO TV and Channel 3 in Vegas for a long time. They also own the Ely Daily Times. And so I got to read a lot of uh, news about mm -hmm. Ely and what was going on there. I even remember, and this may be before your time, um, when somebody drive a vehicle uh, right through the front door of the Ely Daily Times. It was an know? ambulance, yeah. as a matter of fact, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, um, 
Ely has always, to me, been a very resilient place. Um, it's gone through the ups and downs as most mining communities have in, in Nevada. Where does it sit right now? Uh, you know, we're, we're really on a, on a boom cycle right now, and you're absolutely right. Uh, mining communities know the boom and bust cycle quite well. Uh, but Ely's been able to div diversify a lot of its economy in the last couple decades. Into what? Oh, well, we've got the state prison out there. The BLM is a big employer out there, the Bureau of Land Management, uh, the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, mining is still a big part of our community, but tourism in the last probably five years has really taken off. We've got a national is this, park. Is this because of Great Basin National Park? It is, but it's also because of our um, the Nevada Northern Railway, which is a national historic landmark. Right. Uh, and that's based in East Ely, right? Mm -hmm. And it, 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 uh, it always surprises me. I'm always shocked at how far people will come to visit either the national park or our, our railroad museum. Uh, people from out of the country, people from all over the place. I'll be walking down the rail yard and someone will say, well, I'm here from Michigan or we're just stopping in from Florida. And, and um, in, in that sense, I think Ely kind of punches above its weight class in, in uh, visibility nationwide and, and around the world. And dark skies has helped a lot too, right? Dark skies has been an incredible thing. We've Explain got an what that is for people who may not be aware. Uh, so, so dark skies is is becoming more common around, uh, certainly around the Great Basin, but communities where light pollution is at a minimum um, then go the extra effort to make sure that what little polite pollution they have gets eradicated so you can see the night sky. And if you've been out traveling on Highway 50 or in the rural part of the state, like I'm sure you have, and you've stopped uh, just to look up <laughs> after dark, it is incredible the amount of stars, um, the amount of light that's out there on a moonlit uh, moon, moonless night, and it's uh, it's really incredible, and that's something that we've been marketing to um, our, our the the Great Basin Observatory, uh, which got put in a few years ago, is a wonderful resource uh, because it's one of the darkest places in the United States, and because um, of the elevation out there, it makes it a great spot for for that kind of scientific research. It's been a wonderful asset for us to have. And Lehman Caves. Uh, Lehman Caves. I assume you've been there as well? Uh, I've been there as well. Good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, th there's, there's a lot to see and do um, if, if people want to take the time uh, uh, to get there. Um, I was reading your, uh, your um, State of uh, the City speech. Oh. Um, and uh, <coughs> it was really interesting because, you know, in, in, you know, news tends to cover negative. It doesn't tend to cover positive. Right. Um, which is unfortunately, you know, uh, we report on, uh, you know, the plane that crashed, not how many planes landed safely every day. <laughs> so over the years, you know, the, the tough times in Ely, um, the community getting together to support a general store, things like that, have, have made the news. Sure. What surprised me in your report was you got a million dollars sitting in the bank. Yeah, it's been... Um, that, that's stunning. For, for a town our size and, you know, our annual budget... Um, it is definitely not one of the biggest for for a town our size or a city our size in the state. It's around three, four million dollars. Um, but the council has been really progressive about going out and, and getting grants and extra funding and lobbying the federal and state governments for other funds. And um, the really successful towns here in the western U.S. I notice have done that. I was visiting Helper, Utah. Um, earlier last year, and, and they have an annual budget of a million dollars, which they have to run uh, police, fire department, <laughs> municipal utilities, I mean, just imagine. And they have to raise about $2 million out of nothing every year to put on top of that to make things run, and they do a great job. And, and um, we've been really fortunate in that respect. So during COVID, um, uh, again, according to your speech, um, y your employees had to take a pay cut. Um, uh, and they did that, and yet because of American Recovery Funds, you were able to replenish the money that they had given up um, and be able to amass this, this you know, basically rainy day fund, which is, which is incredible. Well, and over the years, um, the city has always been, or, or typically has been run by very fiscally responsible people. Um, so a, a million dollars in the bank hasn't been out of the ordinary for us particularly. Uh, but, but there has been several years here for the last 10 where, you know, some people got into office, decided it was their slush fund, spent it. Um, you know, sometimes they had to, you know, you can't fault them for that. But having that kind of, um, you know, backstop at least, 
uh, our municipal utilities are over 120, sometimes 130 years old. There have been people settled in that area since the 1860s. Um, we still dig up wood stave pipes that are wrapped in wire from, you know, 120 years ago. Well, you got the Ward charcoal ovens there. You got the Ward charcoal ovens. We've got, we've got so many assets uh, around our community that um, I, I think a lot of people, and, and circling back to tourism, I think a lot of people are figuring that out, um, especially with the onset of the pandemic where people couldn't go and do what they usually did. They started traveling, and we got people coming out and, and visiting the national park, our, our state parks like the charcoal ovens and, and Cave Lake and all sorts of things. It's a really unique resource. Uh, okay, so what about mining in the community? Is, it, uh, is it what's currently going on? Like I said, mining uh, is still a large part of our community, and I, I think it will always be. Um, and so... Uh, is it mainly copper? Uh, the one closest to Ely right now, the Robinson Mining uh, operation, is a copper mine. Of course... Um, which is very valuable at this point. Which is very valuable, but they also, uh, you know, with copper, they pick up gold and other uh, valuable metals like molybdenum and and silver and and we have probably I want to say there's at least three other mines in the county um, in various places that uh, you know mine gold and other things and it's a it, it, and like you said it's a boom bust cycle depending on how the economy is doing depending sure. on how much copper they need or gold sure. or everything else and right now it's going really great so. All right, well, let's take a break. We'll come back much more with Nathan Robinson. He is the mayor of Ely, and we're proud to have him here. Thank you for being here. Thank you. We'll be right back. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Nathan Robertson. He is the mayor of Ely. You just told me you guys still have a radio shack? We Get out of town. A, we do still have a radio shack. They're open almost every day. <laughs> almost <laughs> every day. That's awesome. Um, you know, uh, going back to the 70s, I mean, I think I lived in Radio Shack more than I did in my apartment. Of course, the store was bigger than my apartment, sure. so that kind of made <laughs> sense. Um, but, but that's fascinating. So you were talking about uh, your relationship in terms of getting grants and things from the feds. Um, what has been your experience with Catherine Cortez Masto and Jackie, uh, uh, the, Rosen. Uh, Jackie Rosen, the, uh, the, the two uh, senators? Um, are they spending time in Ely? Because they, they have spent time in a lot of rural sure. places, and very conservative people in rural Nevada have said to me that they have been very impressed. Not necessarily that they're going to vote for them, but they've been very impressed with Jackie Rosen and Catherine Cortez Masto. Well, I also have been impressed. Uh, they do show up. Um, it, it's not just lip service. They're there. They come to our events. They, um, they're easily accessible. I can get a hold of their staff. I have both of their cell phone numbers. They're willing to pick up. They take your calls. They listen to your concerns, and um, that, that's really what you that's really what you need in someone in that position. And, and that's what I always enjoy about Nevada. It's a small state, like I said, where there's only 19 cities. It, it shouldn't be hard to contact these people, and I'm glad it's not. All right, so, so turning from the federal side, mm -hmm. um, let's look at the state side. I've talked to a lot of mayors 
and county officials around the state, and they say that they have not seen Governor Sisolak. Have you seen Governor Sisolak? Do you have communication with him personally? Uh, we've had, oh, no, and I don't know that anybody does. Uh, he has come out to Ely uh, with his wife uh, before the pandemic, and it was, it was a pleasure to host them. Uh, as you know, Kathy Sisolak has connections to Ely. Right. Um, so as did Pat Nixon. As did Pat Nixon, that's correct. Um, but it was a pleasure to host them out there. Um, I, I will say that in the state we do have a lot of people who are uh, easily accessible and willing to help. Um, the governor is a little bit harder to get hold of. Uh, like I said, I, I can get a hold of our senators and our congressional delegation and, and our state people at the drop of a hat. Um, the governor is a little harder to get a hold of and I don't know whether that's a function of just the way he runs or, or however else, but um, in a state this small it shouldn't be that hard. But. All right, so, so how do you think, th you know, um, that White Pine County is a pretty conservative place? Well, uh, rural Nevada is, in general, I mean, it's, this isn't the Midwest, you know. Uh, we have Burning Man. You've been across rural Nevada. It's a very, it's a very eclectic place. We it are is. conservative, uh, but we're, uh, you know, I've always felt Nevada is a very purple state. Um, rural people will vote for whoever they think is going to do the best job. I'm sure that's, that's not quite as true as it used to be in the last probably 10 years. Um, but I think when you get deep down into it, people want someone who's going to do the job and do the job well independent of party. You know, there was a time probably a decade ago um, where people in, in uh, Elko County were telling me that they felt that uh, there was potential for Elko to move more Democrat. Uh, but that, that never came true, not <laughs> even close. No, no it hasn't. And, and it's interesting as you look around the state, I mean, these different communities can be quite a bit different too. I mean, through this pandemic, we have not had the kind of uh, rancor and contention that I've seen in some other uh, rural places in our state, um, which has been great. I mean, our communities really come together. There haven't been hours and hours of public comment of conspiracy theories at our, at our public meetings. And, you know, there's been some. It's been hard for people. You would expect some uh, discontent, but uh, I've been really impressed and heartened at how our communities come together through this. And, and what benefits have you seen from these various bills um, that came out both under the Trump administration and under the Biden administration um, to help cities and counties? Well, the, the CARES Act funding, the ARPA funding has really been a shot in the arm for uh, not only making up some of the, um, some of the deficits because of the pandemic, but uh, it's allowed us to kind of look down the road and say, okay, how are we going to address some of these local issues like housing, um, education, child care? Uh, there's been some very progressive ideas put forward, and, and now there's the funding to do that, which has been great. Okay, and, and that funding would never have been there if it weren't for these? Well, not, e not as easily accessible anyway. Um, it, it, they just kind of, they put it in your bank account and you can use it uh, for these items, which has been great. I think our city would have still gone out and tried to get find funding through other sources for these things. But to have that there and, and able to do that, it, it makes the, it takes the energy out of having to find the money and you can put the energy into, into making the money work for you. Does it concern you? I, I presume that you're pretty conservative yourself. Sure. Um, that the amount of money, both from Republicans and Democrats, that have been poured into the states, and you know we're seeing inflation yeah. uh, because people are so flush at this point, and not everybody, but but I would say the majority of people um, appear to be flush with cash, which is what's causing this problem. Yeah, it's it's a big player in the problem at the very least, and um, I I am concerned. Uh, you know, someone's going to have to pay that back sooner or later, <laughs> but in the meantime, and and we've had the discussion that. Um, they're going to spend it one way or the other. We just want to make sure that it's spent, as much of it as possible, is spent in our community. Um, and, and I've always been a big proponent of infrastructure. I think infrastructure is one of the few things government does that's actually an investment that's going to pay dividends. Um, so our council and, and um, myself have been looking to how, how, do we, how do we make sure this money gets spent as an investment that keeps paying into the community in years to come and isn't just a handout that goes and evaporates. All right, let's take another break. We'll be back with Nathan Robinson. He's the mayor of Ely in White Pine County after this timeout. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. 
Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at REMAX Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Nathan Robertson. He is the mayor of Ely. Obviously, we cannot have an interview with you and not talk about water. Sure. Okay, so the battle has been between Eastern Nevada and Southern Nevada. Um, it sits in abeyance right now. The Southern Nevada Water Authority says they're not going to go after that water, a huge underground reservoir in Eastern Nevada. Um, but they still maintain their ranches in northeastern Nevada. Um, now you have Utah going after that same water because they're on the other side of, of right. that, that area. Um, so what are your thoughts? If somebody's going to take the water, <laughs> do you want it to go to Utah or Las Vegas? Well, obviously... And obviously you don't want it to go anywhere. <laughs> obviously we don't want it to go anywhere. And um, I, I have to give a shout out to the Great Basin Water Network and and Kyle Rornick, which I'm sure you've had on your show here. Many, many times. He's a good um, friend. He, they've been just fantastic in this battle, and it, it, has, been, it has been a battle for decades now. Uh, one we've won so far and hope to continue to win, but it's, um, it, it becomes a, mining, a water mining operation. That water doesn't get replenished, especially in uh, the climate that we have now. Well, and beyond that, yeah. it, it's, it's for those that don't know, this was discovered back in uh, the Reagan administration when they were going to put the MX project in, sure. in part of Nevada. And it's deep geologic water, water that has seeped down there over the millennia. Right. And so, yeah, it's one-time use. It, uh, y there's no chance in our lifetimes or anybody else that we're ever going to know to right. replenish that. So it, it's one-shot use. Well, and, and with its proximity to the Great Basin National Park, uh, with, with sites for the, our, our Native American tribes that are in the area, um, there are just, there's just so much risk for devastation <laughs> for using that water that we're really hoping that uh, working together with our partners in the area and the um, Great Basin Water Network that we can avoid that in the future. Okay, um, and, and the ranches uh, in Baker, for example, are, are still very strong in their opposition. They are and they should be. I mean, this is their livelihood um, and it's a critical part of the economy of the Great Basin and, and they should be. Uh, what did you think when Senator Reid said that that water would be more useful flushing toilets on the Strip than being used to grow alfalfa? It's a, it's a, that's a short-term view. It's a really short-term uh, view. And um, as you know, that Senator Reid didn't have a lot of friends in our area towards the end. Um, and, and like I said, I, I put a statement out about it as well. But he, he also did some great things for our area. And I think anybody who knew Senator Reid over the years was equally uh, grateful and uh, bemused by his behavior a lot of the time, but um, he did have an impact for good and for real. <laughs> yeah, and you know, that, that really is an irony. Um, sure. Th because, you know, he, he made a decision a long time ago that the environmental movement was gonna be a great support for him, 
but the environmentalists didn't live in the environment. They lived in the big cities. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to an extent, he had to go against rural Nevada um, and kind of wrote that off. On the other hand, as you say, there were a lot of projects that would never have gotten done without his support. Absolutely, and, and like I said, I don't think there's one person that knew Harry Reid that said, you know what, th I've gotten a lot of help from him, and he's also been a big enemy. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, a lot of people I talked to over the years said that, and it was, he did some great things, and, and on the flip side, he was a big problem. <laughs> well, he said on this program, because he was a good friend to this program sure. for many, many years, and uh, he said on the program that uh, even though they disagreed politically, if Sheldon Adelson or Steve Wynn ever needed help, he was happy to give it. And he was. So, so there was yeah. a fascinating balance. Um, I think he embodied Nevada very well in that sense. Yes, yes. Th that would be a great way to put it. And a great way to close this out. Listen, great to have you here. Please Thanks come back, um, especially during the legislative session, because I know how tough it is for rural Nevada uh, to be able to get their voices heard, and we're happy to be a place for that voice to be echoed. Thank you very much. I plan on it. All right, and we'll be right back. Brian Culp of Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culp of Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada is a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Don't forget another way of watching Nevada Newsmakers is to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. We'll see you on the next broadcast.